And this was sent to me by a friend of mine, and it was a, a website, oh, sorry, a YouTube channel of a Finnish artist called Simon Grippenberg. He's got about a thousand subscribers. He gets a couple of hundred views per video. But I had a look at this video, and, and it was about a frenet heater being wind-driven. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because it's a fascinating idea. But I also had a look at this channel. And um, he does some awesome stuff, actually. It's one of those things that you kind of have to dig around on YouTube because it's <laughs> quite a lot of junk on YouTube, quite a lot of false information, quite a lot of scams and quite a lot of clickbait. But there is some brilliant information if you have a dig around. Now, I didn't dig around from it. My friend did, OK? Um, but I went to this Simon Gruppenberg's channel, had a look at a couple of wind turbine designs that he's got. It kind of hit a note with me, and this one particularly I liked. And I thought I'd give that a go at replicating it. So, what I've come up with is a stick with a bit of wood on it. This stick has got um, this circle of wood, and in there I've drilled straight through two holes. That hole goes straight through to that hole, and then 90 degrees, exactly the same thing. And I've got a couple of bits of this. This is fiberglass rod. And the rod can go straight in there and swivel around the same axis, and that seems to be important. Then I've taken some aluminium sheet and bend it over, because that will then glue on to that rod, like that. That goes in there. And then the other piece goes on at 90 degrees. So it's at 90 degrees like that. So I'm going to get that built. There we go. That's what one blade looks like on these two. And they're free to swivel on each other. OK, so that's it mocked up. Now, the blades are like that. You see it's 90 degrees or like that. It's 90 degrees. And we've got them offset against each other and they're fixed on the same axle. So I think the idea, as it turns, that gets hit by the wind and presents that surface and gets pushed as it's doing that, this one is levered up to present the least amount of surface so we don't have much drag on here and we get a bit of push on there. I think that's the idea, okay? And as that one comes around, the same thing happens and so we get it to rotate. So I've got a fan on it so that we can see it happen. Now, I think that works that way because it's spinning in that direction. So if it worked the opposite way, we would expect it to spin in the opposite direction, I think. But certainly very interesting. We've got a wind speed of about 1.5 metres per second there. This is a big bin of TVD and CD Brom players, and they're just getting thrown away. It's a real shame, actually. I mean, nobody uses them anymore. Hey, we all work on cards, so they go to the bin. Actually, they probably go to Africa. But it's a real shame because there's some great pieces in here that we can use. So if you ever have, see these lying around, pick one up. And they're really stupid to open. There's four screws there. You take those four screws off. Once you've done those four screws, this top bit will actually just pop straight off. And you'll see underneath we've got a board there that can come out and it's that bit that we want and there's three screws holding that in place. Do those three screws and that will pop straight out and that is the drive motor. It's a brushless DC motor actually. Right, what we're looking for are those three dots. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're there. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's three. When it's three, it's easy. We just need to solder a wire onto those. When it's four, one of them, we don't need to solder a wire to, and we recognise that by the resistance. But this one's got three, so we need to solder a wire to each of those. Now we've soldered the wires on, we can solder a three-phase rectifier on the other side. Dead easy to make those just look it up. And we've turned our motor into a generator, because remember, as electrical machines go, motors and generators are the same thing. So we've now got a three-phase generator giving a single-phase DC output. What's really cool about these is they fit a CD, because of course they're made to do that, and they fit it beautifully and they're beautifully balanced. So we stick a CD on there, we can actually make that the basis of a wind turbine. And we're going to do exactly that with our easy-to-make wind turbine. So I've got myself a bit of Tyvek, although you could use stiff cloth, and you'll notice there's lines drawn on it. Put a strip of super glue here, 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 and here, press it down, wait for that glue to dry, and then we can slice up there and that'll make us a flap. So there it is with its Tyvek circle glued on, flaps cut, hair dry, and let's see if it spins.
OK, so we're charging up a capacitor with that and it charges the capacitor. Now, don't expect this to solve the world energy crisis anytime soon. We're using a CD spindle motor, so it's not going to generate huge amounts. But it is actually generating and it demonstrates this little design here. Uh, so, of course, I went to Tinkercad and designed this. It's a wheel with a hub. The wheel has holes all the way around, as does the hub. And the holes on the wheels have little stops by them because I also created this, which I call the feather. The feather goes into the holes at the hub and the rim of the wheel, just like that. There we go. So when the wind blows from that direction, it picks the feather up, creating resistance. When the wind blows from that direction, it flattens the feather down, reducing the resistance. And of course, the feathers are pointing in opposite directions around the wheel. So as it blows on one side, it will pick them up. As it's blowing on the other side, it will flatten them down. And there are 24 of these. We attach these to a wheel. Okay, there it is. Now, when the wind catches them, it pushed up. There's a stop here to stop them going too far and then they'll fall back down again and there's a stop there to stop them falling too far back down. As the wind blows across the whole surface like that it will lift these up but push these down and we should see a rippling effect as that wheel spins. So let's put a fan on it and see if it actually works. If you look you can see that ripple effect going on. Let me hold it for a second. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, so we're in the lab, we put a fan on it and we're getting that rippling effect. So it seems to be working all right, but let's take it outside and see what happens then. <laughs> and it works in conditions au natural, so to speak. <laughs> that is actually awesome. There's always two ways of approaching generation. One would be to whack a motor on the end of the axle here and see what we get out. For that, we're going to need a fair bit of torque. And the other way is the way that I absolutely love, and that is to stick the magnets on here. So, of course, that's what I'm going to go for. Now, I reprinted it. So I redesigned it, reprinted it. This is the centre wheel, so you've got the feathers to put in. And, hey presto! We've got a load of magnets there. These are one centimetre by two millimetre going north, south, north, south, north, south at the end of that wheel. And we'll put the feathers in there and that will blow it around. And as you can see, the bearings are actually in that hub because we don't need to drive anything anymore. With this arrangement, you need to drive a motor. With this arrangement, it is its own generator all in one. Of course, what we need is some kind of coil. When you're thinking about coils, you're really thinking about Fleming's right hand generator rule where the movement, current and field of magnets are set at 390 degrees from each other. So when you have movement in one direction and you have a field crossing other, the direction of the current is always going to be given for you and fixed. Of course, in a generator, the movement's the same way, but the field is going north-south, north-south, so the field is exchanging. So what we effectively want to do is have the current move one way and then the other way. We want to join that up somehow so that the net effect is the current moves only one way. Now we can do that really simply. Actually we just do that like this. You'll notice that the wire goes up one side and down the other side and so the current moves in the right direction. And a serpentine coil represents that. But of course there are one north and one south. And we've got 20 magnets here, 10 north, 10 south, going north, south, north, south, north, south. So what that means is we're going to have 10 going that way across and 10 going down that way, making 20 in total. And that's exactly what that template is. So let's go and wind that coil. So to make this coil, I've got this massive coil of hair thin wire, a bit of a wooden board and two bolts with some rubber over them. And what we do is put the bolts in the board and just wind the coil round and round and then tape it all together. To make more sense when you see it, so let's get on with that.
And there's our coil wound. Now what we've got to do is jam it on this former. Incidentally, if you want three fares, make three of these. And then we just wind that onto the former in a serpentine. And when you've done that, that is what you get. Now on a practical point, you might notice on the coil, I put these little tape bits here to hold the coil together. And in that position, because it makes it a piece of cake, to then put the coil onto the actual former. So, I did this template, wound the serpentine coil on it, and that is my generator base for my feather turbine. These prints are available on Tinkercad. If you go to Tinkercad, Robert Murray Smith, you'll see feather generator, which are these prints. Uh, the STL file, sorry. Now uh, these got, that goes on there like that, and we'll take the feathers off of here and stick them in there. So there are essentially only three parts. The generator section, the drive section with its magnets, and the feathers. Now there are 24 feathers in this case, but the feather is all one design. So you'll just see three parts on the SDL files, clip it all together, and we're ready to go. I mean, could we make this any easier? They've printed the three parts, clipped them together, wound a serpentine coil, which is singly the simplest coil to wind, and we're going to see if it generates. So, let's stick the feathers in there. Okay, that's the feathers in. These, incidentally, are skate bearings. They're 22mm by 8mm internal, 7mm in um, width. And there's two of them, one at the top, one below, and then on this I've got a, just a, a washer as a spacer. This could do with improvement, I would think, but that slots in there and is free to spin. Now I've attached an LED to it. So we'll take that out in the wind, see if we can light our LED. Okay, I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not actually sure if you can see this LED or not. Right there, it's spinning like crazy, and that LED is definitely lighting. <laughs> that is awesome, it really is. It's a, a bit of a pen to hold, I should have put a handle on it really. Okay, so it works in the wind. Let's take it inside and have another look at it. Just so we can see that it's actually doing it. It's a bit bright. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's definitely impossible to see out there. So I brought it in, I'll give it a spin and we'll see what kind of light we get from it. There you go. <laughs> Okay, a quick open circuit voltage on that. What are we getting? Yeah, about 2.5 volts. Makes sense for it to light the LED. Well, we're working on this idea of a flat wind turbine, which has got two main components to it. One is the feather idea. So, as the wind blows across the turbine, the feather, which is this flap here, gets picked up, increases the surface area, and causes the turbine to turn. Now, in that kind of turbine, what normally happens is that stays up and it creates a resistance when it comes onto this side, but in the feather, it gets blown down and reduces the resistance. So that was one of the ideas. The other idea was right here on the rim. We put the magnets away from the axle to create generation at the rim because the other idea was the generation at the rim was superior in terms of speed for generation at the axle. And generation at the axle was superior in terms of torque, and torque and speed can always be played off with each other. So those were the two main ideas. Now, it caused quite a lot of interest and I had some great, uh, uh, some great things sent to me with suggestions about what to do. Of course, if I were to pick up all the suggestions, I'd be printing them for the rest of my life. So I've chosen one, which is a redesign of the feather. The original feather actually had quite a small surface area, and this surface area is about three times as much. Again, working on the idea that if we're poking more surface, we'll get more torque, and I like that idea a lot, so I've chosen that one. This is actually by a friend of mine called Dursan, who you probably know him better actually as K-Rex. What I'll do is at the end of the channel, I'll put a link to one of his videos so you can jump over and support him if you want to. But it's certainly a very interesting design that he's done, and so, what I've done is I've replaced my feathers with his feathers and we're going to stick those all the way around. Now, if you saw video 1874, <laughs> it stands me actually because 
1864 was the original feather. 1874 was only 10 days ago, and it feels like a lifetime. But if you've saw video 1874, you'll know that we have a third idea that we want to incorporate. So the first idea is the feathers to reduce resistance. The second idea is generation at the rim. And the third idea is magnetic levitation. Because we looked at maglev. So what I've put here is a ceramic ring magnet. You get these from um, speakers, although I bought this one from Amazon. And on the base, I've got another ceramic ring magnet where the north face is up and the north face is up. So that's going to be a magnetic bearing. If you want a bit more on magnetic bearings, check out video 1874. So we'll put the feathers in, pop it on the stand, and let's see what this bad boy can actually do with those two improvements. So we finish the feathers, pop that there, let's see if it works. really showing is that, uh, you know, in a wind it'll turn in one direction. We're having hardly any wind and so it's turning pretty slowly. So I brought it indoors. We've got a fan we're going to turn on it. I've got my multimeter here to be able to read some kind of voltage from it and we'll see what we get on open circuit voltage. Let's turn the fan on at about 3.4 meters per second. Now this coil is just a coil, okay, and then I'm going to hold it up against the magnets underneath. We get any reading there? Two volts. Awesome. Three volts, four volts, <laughs> five volts. <laughs> <laughs> of course, with the magnetic bearings, I've turned the fan off and look at that bad boy go. What are we getting there? We're currently getting about 1.82 volts, 2.73 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to turn and generate for ages. Let me stop it, show you where I mean about the magnets. There they are, right there. Generation on the rim. <laughs> that actually, I thought was pretty good. Now. A common comment I get is, read me some amps, because I can't tell them what's going on. And, and that's a fair comment, because you're used to seeing stuff in a certain way. You know, somebody will present the finished wind turbine, they'll tell you it's the bee's knees, and you'll want the power readings, and that's fine. But you have to remember what we're doing here. We're using the same magnets, the same coil, the same length of wire, the same wind speed, the same sound diameter. The only thing that can be happening, remember it's BLV sine theta, is the velocity must change because everything else is staying the same. So EMF is a measure, a direct measure of how fast that wheel is turning. And the only reason that wheel can turn faster is that's doing a better job at capturing the energy from the wind. So it's good enough to read the voltage while we're developing something. If we get something where we're going to say to everybody, hey, look, this is awesome, then yeah, amps and power, certainly. But at this stage, if I were to do that every time, well, the videos would be hours long, and it'd be about as interesting as watching a door dry after you'd just painted it, and I'd just get bored doing it. I just want a quick measure to show me that the change I've made is an improvement, and of course, direct, velo um, direct velocity, direct voltage, that's fine for what we're doing here. So. I would suggest you just think a little bit more about what it is we're actually doing and what it is you're actually seeing. So, you know, I'm not presenting you something that's producing that amount of power. We're investigating what this leaf shape can do. So, thank you for sending that, Derson. That was absolutely brilliant. And remember, you know him as K-Rex, and I'll put a link to his channel. I can't do everybody's suggested design or I'd be at it forever, but there is a lot of really good stuff that's in the comments that people have said, so I hope you're reading through the comments, and we'll continue our work on this because I think there's an awful lot more to be done with this. And don't forget, we have the Darwin lurking in the background, and I'd like to merge the two. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.